It's my favorite time of year again, September 1st, and I'm headed back to the prairies. I'm going to go back to Montana this year, and I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to find. This year has been a lot of drought, there's been wildfires, so I've got a lot of questions there about what the conditions are going to be like. But hopefully I'll find some good bird numbers, and I'm really hoping to scratch another species off the list. I'm going to go for that sage grouse again. Well, no road trip is complete without a trip to the old Cabela's. And uh, this time, I, I really needed to come here because uh, I've been looking for shotgun shells for a good while now. And as everybody knows, it's crazy to try to find things that you need. Um, but uh, I've been looking for some non-tox number fives for months. And I've been on email lists and waiting lists, and I just can't seem to lock them down. But I got them. All right, we made it. So, you know, the, everything we've heard this year has been about wildfires, drought, and no rain everywhere. So um, definitely had some concerns about what we might find when we got here. Um, I've heard everything from, you know, uh, things will be maybe just down a little bit from last year to you shouldn't come. And like almost people saying it's unethical to hunt right now or a, just a bad idea because it's hazardous. Um, so... With that in mind, uh, I'm going to be careful, um, be careful where I park and just be kind of cautious of those kinds of things. Um, but as at first glance, it's, it's definitely dry here. Uh, things look pretty brown, um, but there is some green around. So we'll just uh, get out of the truck, see what we find. I forgot the GoPro on this first walk, so I tried to get some cell phone video, but it ends up on the ground. All right, so our first time out of the truck here. Um, it's kind of late in the day already and hot. It's almost noon. Uh, it's probably in the 80s, but uh, I couldn't help it. I had to get them out for uh, for a quick run. CC and Mox here <laughs> taking a well-deserved break here. But we got our first bird. Um, these birds, uh, this time of day, a lot of times are sitting in the shade, and this lonely little tree right behind me was holding this nice mature bird, and they both locked up at the same point on it, so it's pretty cool. Good way to start. Here I've got Cece locked down on a nice little cubby. Whoa. Wow. Good girl, baby. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> All right, Luce. All right, another dead bird. Dead bird. Well, that was gorgeous. Good job, Gurley. Good job. All right, so we're just uh, hanging out here at camp and uh, enjoying this nice nice sunset on our first day here in Montana and um, I'm encouraged I'm encouraged um, the cover isn't too bad um, I'm seeing decent sized uh, broods so and, and there's grasshoppers everywhere so um, so so far so good I'm, I'm encouraged and um, so anyways we just got a nice little camping spot here tonight and uh, that's one thing I love about coming out here to Montana and one thing I love about the truck setup and I mean you can just kind of camp everywhere out here and you get to have <laughs> days like this one thing about hunting this time of year is you've got to be able to carry a lot of water so I'm walking in on a point here and I'll let you guys in on one of my secrets to success. It's always good to load your gun. You gotta be shitting me, dude. Oh no. I didn't load my gun. 
Good grief. Get that to her for her back. Give, give, good girl. Then after that, Moxie had her first porcupine incident. Oh, girl, I'm so sorry. Look at that. She got him on her side. This is going to suck. Guess I should consider ourselves lucky, huh? Good girl. Oh, sorry. You're a tough little shit. Oof. Good girl. Yeah, good girl. Oof. That one's deep. Wow, that was that. That was to the skin. It was that far into her. Like an inch and a quarter into her skin. Nasty. God. God, dogs are tough. Man, if somebody was doing this to me, I'd be crying like a freaking baby. Okay, it seemed like I got all those quills out and she was ready to rock, so I cut them loose and it wasn't too long before they went on point. Easy. Moxie, Moxie. Easy. Oh, wow. <laughs> Moxie, dead bird. Good boy, Tubby. Tubby, Tubby, come here. Come here. Moxie. Moxie, dead bird over here. Good dogs. Dead bird, fetch. Good girl here. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. So Moxie's a very natural retriever, but I'm going to run her in astra field trials so i wanted to make sure her retrieve was really perfect so i've i'm kind of in the final stages of a force fetch with her so that's why i'm kind of sitting here just loving her up as long as she's holding this bird and doing a good job good girl good dogs oh that was pretty <laughs> wow it doesn't get a lot prettier than that they were pointing and tracking from way over there and uh so they just kind of kept working it kept working it and uh my goodness those birds sat for us i mean they came up at i don't know five yards that was crazy so this is early season and one of the good things to look for is grasshoppers these young broods are going to be devouring grasshoppers like crazy so in the early mornings, they like to get out there in areas where the grasshoppers are plentiful and feed. So it's a good thing to key on. That's that pheasant, I think. I think this is a pheasant. Easy. Yeah. No bird, no bird. Oh, look. Someone killed a porcupine. Oh, whoever that was, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Now I've got CC on point down in this bottom.
Good girl. Or she didn't have the wind, so she she was kind of stopped up wind of them. That was a good girl, honey. She's being careful. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. All right. That was kind of a tough one. It was down in this bottom and got the wind is actually coming this way and she kind of just stopped here and obviously didn't quite have it. All right. That's number four for today. Good day. This is the next morning here, and I've got CC and Tubbs on the ground. Tubbs is on point here, and CC's backing, and this is a pretty nice find by him because there's absolutely no wind at all. Good boy! Good boy, Tubbs. Come here, buddy. Come here. Good boy. Dead bird. Good girl. Are you in here? Good girl. Good girl. Woohoo! Cover your hands, buddy. Good boy. Good girl. Good job. Good job, dogs. Oh, that just never gets old. So CC did another stop to flush here. I'm just checking to see if there's any more. This is happening a lot right now because it's hot, of course. There's just no wind. Um, and you know, when the air is not moving, the morning sunshine's hitting the ground, it's heating the ground up. That heat is just driving the air straight up. So that scent does not get to the dog's nose. Kind of working something here, right here. Whoa, Tubbs. Whoa. Okay. So, anyways, the more this happens, we'll see the dogs get more and more and more careful. Um, the tougher the conditions are, the more careful they got to be, obviously. So, that's kind of what we're seeing now. Is they're just they're stopping on anything they smell. And they're waiting for me to come check it out, which is exactly what I want them to do. So that's good. I just wish we could get some wind. Good boy. Come here. Come here. That is the boy. Wow. Damn. That boy sat tight. Good boy, Tubbs. Wow. Good boy. Good boy. All right, Lisa. Good, good dog, good dog. Good God, was that thing in there tight. This one was cool because both dogs were moving at a pretty good clip and they just stuck this point at the same time. Had a boy, Tubbs. Man, these birds are sticking tight. You can find this kind of behavior sort of mid-morning after these birds have been out feeding. All they really want to do is hold up in some cover and lay low. So that tends to make them sit better. Man, they're holding tight. Now Moxie's got one locked down and Tubbs is backing.
Good girl, Moxie. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Come here. Boxy, come here. Good girl. She's really worried about him. She's worried that he's gonna come take her bird. Yeah, that's good girl. Good girl. Give. Good girl. Well, just hanging out here at camp with the dogs. Enjoying another beautiful evening in Montana. This is just one of the million things I love about this trip. Got this great weather and get to have this time to just hang with the dogs and let them roam free and do their thing and, and have a good time. So it's really, it's really an enjoyable part of this. Okay, now I'm headed to another area and we're gonna try something a little different. All right, so we're doing something a little bit different today. As you can see behind me, I am in sagebrush. I am going to see if I can't get a sage grouse. It's something that I tried to do two years ago when I was in Montana. Um, I tried for several days and I struck out. Um, so it's been kind of a monkey on my back ever since. So we're gonna, I came to this area I've never been to um it's supposed to be a pretty good place for sage grouse it certainly looks like it's good habitat for them but uh, we're going to get out this morning and see what we find it's a pretty eerie day today we kind of got this haze i assume it's a lot of smoke and dust the sun just looks like this weird red ball in the sky So it doesn't take too long and Tubbs goes on point here, but I can tell he's a good ways off of it. It was sage grouse, but they got up a good 50 yards up ahead of us. Oh, up there. Wow, that was way the hell out there. So we've got another point here, but it turns out to be sharp tails. Oh, I see it. Oh, I see it. Good boy, Tubby. Good boy, come here. Well, wasn't really what I was expecting in here. So, we've seen some sage grouse in here, but they haven't been real cooperative. They've been coming up well off of points. I'm talking, you know, 50 yards plus. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll find some that'll want to sit for us. So this is sign from old sage grouse roost. And this is something that you want to see every now and then when you're looking for sage grouse. And basically the, the greener it looks, the fresher it is. So here we go. Tubbs goes on point here on this nice little family group of sage grouse. Dead bird, Tubby! Cece's got it. <laughs> Good girl here. Bring it here, baby. That's a big one, isn't it? Good boy, Tubby. All right, it looks like a young one. Good girl. There's... Good boy, Tubby! Good boy, buddy. Yeah, look what I got. Good boy, Tubby. Hey, easy, easy. Yeah, look what we got. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. All right, so we just got our first sage grouse. 
and uh, we've uh, they've been giving us fits all morning. Dogs have been pointing them, and uh, they've been getting up at 40, 50, 60 yards plus. And I didn't know if they were going to play ball or not, but um, just kind of got lucky here. Uh, Tubbs was pointing this little family group, and I come walking in, and and there just happened to be another one off behind him that was closer to me that I had a good shot at. And it was a young one, but uh, so no boomer yet, but we got our first sage grouse and I'm pretty pumped. At that point, we had had a good morning and it was starting to get pretty hot. So I decided to make our way back to the truck. If you're curious how big sage grouse are, here's a something to reference here. So you got juvenile sharp tail right here and a juvenile sage grouse right there. So it seems like we're going to be getting flushes that are a little further out than what I've been seeing with the sharp tails and the, the huns. So I'm going to put a little more choke in my gun and hopefully give me a better chance at some of these longer shots. So I got these sharp tails that are out here in the sagebrush and uh, I was kind of curious what they were eating on. And it looks like it's pretty much all greens. Um, I know I saw a lot of dandelion out there. I'm not sure if that's... Yeah, that does look like dandelion. So maybe they're eating the dandelion. Um, and that's... That is all I see in there. So, yeah, there's not... Um, you know, it's really early season. And everywhere else I've been finding grasshoppers. And maybe some berries or seed. Or, you know, like wheat seeds or something. But, um, but here... Uh, there's really not any grasshoppers to speak of, so they've just got to eat the greens, I guess. So this is the next morning here, and my intention was to focus on the sage grouse, because I was really hoping to run into a boomer. Here's another good sign that you might be in sage grouse territory. If you're uh, seeing a fence and it's got little pieces of vinyl siding hung on top of it, well... That was done by, I can't remember what organization did it, but um, it was like Sage Grouse Initiative or something like that. And uh, they have come out and they've marked these fences because evidently we lose a good number of birds to barbed wire fences. Um, these birds really fly quite low, uh, lower than most upland birds that I've seen. And uh, evidently they get, they get, they hit these fences and, and they die, so. That's why these things are on here. So if you see those, you might be in a good sage grass spot. Here we've got Tubbs on point and Moxie's backing. And it's another one of those really calm mornings where there just isn't a breath of wind. So the dogs have got to be really careful. So here I'm thinking, great, these birds are going to come up as soon as I start crossing this fence. Had a girl. Had a boy. Good boy, Tubbs. Come on, bud. Good boy, buddy. Come here. Really young one here. Good boy, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, there's another one. Here, loose. Probably shouldn't have shot a double just to give myself an opportunity. And another one, I guess. So here we got Moxie and Tubbs on point here, and this is another one of those long point, track, point, track things. And they had to be doing it for a good 100, 120 yards.
I had my limitless age grouse at this point, so I was hoping these were sharp tails, and they were. Dead bird, Tubby. Dead bird. Had a girl. That's a good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Just what we needed. We had our limit of sage grouse, so I was hoping that was gonna be sharp tails. They seemed like they were kind of running away from them. I've seen the sharp tails run more in sagebrush than I have in the prairie grass. I don't know if that's really a thing. It just seems like it might be a thing. So maybe that's what the deal is. They just like to run a little more out here. As usual for this time of year, it got pretty hot pretty quick. So we had to call it a day. Pack was heavy going out and heavy coming back. So I had uh, four liters of water on me when I left. And um, we ran out. So we used every bit of it. And uh, then we're just kind of weighted down with birds on the way back. As we lost our water weight, we gained bird weight, which I am not complaining about. So, it's not the easiest conditions, but we had a good hunt, that's for sure. Dogs did a great job, considering. Okay, so that's the first part of our trip, and I really couldn't be happier with the way it's gone so far. I mean, you know, we've had a couple bumps in the road, of course, but overall, considering the drought and everything that's happened this year, I was really happy to see the bird numbers that we're seeing, and... Um, it's always cool to uh, scratch a new species off the list that I've been I've been gunning for for a couple years now. So, with the sage grouse. So it's been a good time so far, but there's plenty more to come in the next one. If you're interested in getting more of this kind of content, you might want to check out my Patreon page. You can go to patreon.com and search for Eric Forrester, or you can click on the link in the description and get access to all that extra content. <laughs>